Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with another Sunday night live stream show. That's right, it's Sunday night, y'all, and appreciate y'all hanging out and joining us for tonight's live stream show. It is time to talk to a little bit about fishing, a little bit about what's going on now, what's coming up in all things near shore and offshore, and a little bit of inshore fishing too. Hopefully you have some questions for us. If you do have some questions for us, remember, you got to text us at that phone number right there, 727-393-1947. If you want your question answered live during the show, again, text us at that phone number. Now, uh, we are going to get started here real quickly. Before we do, want to give a shout out to those who have been sending stars uh, while we get ready to start here. Uh, really appreciate that. Uh, the stars, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, uh, is just basically a way for those watching on Facebook to show their support, and it really helps us out. So a big shout out to uh, Vicky Poole, Terry Feather, Richard Plays Blazak, Larry White, Steve Taylor, and we just had one, Robert Holshauser with a thousand stars appreciate that buddy thank you so much so appreciate all those of you who have sent stars and uh, appreciate all of you who have liked the video please like the video for us if you're watching on facebook give the video a like if you're watching on youtube give it a thumbs up if you're watching on instagram give it the old double tap for us thanks ryan badola for those stars buddy appreciate you man uh, if you're watching on Instagram, don't forget, if you go on your phone, if you're watching on the Instagram app on your phone, if you go to the, um, uh, if you go to the browser on your phone, and that was the word I was looking for, the browser on your phone, and go to Instagram.com and log in like that, then on Instagram.com, you can turn your uh, phone sideways and you'll be able to see uh, the actual full screen and you won't miss out on anything hunter drop appreciate those stars craig robinson appreciate those stars thank you so much uh this live show is brought to you by our good friends over there at gator gyms oh man i'm all backwards again i, I did really well to start the gator gyms tackle this live show is brought to you by gator gyms tackle every live show brought to you by gator gyms tackle 3301 pinellas point drive south in st pete you haven't checked them out yet they have a crazy selection killer deals if you bring a young angler and tell them hubbard's marina sent you you'll get a free gift tim dykes appreciate those stars man thank you so much with that we're gonna get roll oh michelle dillard as well thank you so much uh with that oh dan netto too thank you guys uh with that we're gonna get into the photos and show you guys what we've been catching inshore then we're gonna work our way near shore and offshore talk a little bit about the weather then we're gonna get into the your questions so hopefully you have some questions don't forget you got to text us your questions if you want them answered live during the show the redfish bite has been pretty good inshore as of late. Definitely catching a lot of these redfish around the coastal waters. Definitely those uh, coastlines, those mangrove coastlines, those oyster bars, grass flats. You're looking late afternoon has definitely been the better bite. And, uh, late afternoon when that water has a chance to warm up from that afternoon sun. A temperature, a degree or two of temperature makes all the difference in the world. And that's really been the big thing inshore right now. Seawalls too, getting sun-baked seawalls, that definitely radiates some heat and allows those redfish to get up there and stay a little warmer, feed a little bit better. Uh, we've been seeing it along those shallow grass flats, around those mangrove shorelines, residential dock lines, seawalls, all great areas to look Stacy Ammerman, Danny Corvin, and uh, Anthony Ross Sr. Really appreciate those stars, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, and then with the redfish as well, we've been seeing a few snook. Snook have definitely been a little fewer and further between, a little bit harder to dial in on. They are definitely a more affected by this colder weather. But been able to find them similar to the redfish. Later afternoon has been better. Those shallow areas in that dark bay mud, those little pockets along those shorelines, 
those little deep cuts uh, and look for those areas where that warmer water is going to influx, where you've got a really shallow back bay area flushing out on an outbound tide, or you've got like a spring fed creek uh, filtering out into that bay water. That mixing zone is a good area to look for them too. Trout bite's been a little bit difficult around the area. Uh, but a few people are catching them. You just got to work a little harder to find the concentrations of the trout as of late. Definitely a lot of people are talking about how not a lot of trout around since that red tide event. So a little interesting there. We're definitely uh, kind of talking about that and trying to keep a little bit of a, a little closer eye on that over on our radio show, the Real Animals radio show. Been talking a lot about how the trout bite's been a little tough. Uh, hogfish, on the other hand, we've been seeing a lot of these hogfish as of late. The hogfish bite's been going really well for us near shore. 10 hour all day is definitely the best opportunity to target them. Five hour, five hour half day, we're catching a few of them too. Uh, but the 10 hour all day gives you more fishing time for those hogfish. Lots of good hogfish coming up. The trick right now is finding that weather window. Today was not it, it was a little too chilly. And uh, that water was super stirred up. And uh, as we as we assumed, today's bite was definitely a little tougher. Actually, I would say very tough uh, because of that stirred up cold weather condition. Mangrove snapper bite's been going pretty good. Even near shore, we've been doing pretty good on the mangrove snapper. Catching a few keeper red grouper uh, near shore as well, but a lot more of them further offshore and deeper water. Dan Neto, appreciate those stars again, buddy. As far as weather is concerned, <clears throat> today you can see we are right behind the front. The water still hadn't quite calmed down. It was super stirred up and murky and uh, definitely was a tough bite today. Tomorrow's going to be better. It's going to have time to have calmed down and it's going to be cleared up a little bit and definitely should be a better, uh, more cooperative bite tomorrow, especially as we have a little bit of uh, wind kind of coming in midweek, that barometer is going to be moving around. So tomorrow should be a good opportunity, I think. Plus, we're coming up on that new moon, February 1st. So not a lot of opportunity to feed at night, especially with that dirty water. Stacy Ammerman, again, appreciate those stars. Thank you so much. So we're looking forward to a good little weather window tomorrow and into Tuesday, too. We're going to talk more about that. But as you can see here, the least windy days are going to be <clears throat> today, Monday, and Friday. And we're going to have a little bit of wind there midweek, really kind of peaking Wednesday. The new moon is uh, February 1st. That's Tuesday. And then it's going to slowly get bigger and bigger till our next full moon, which is February 16th, kind of mid-February. This week, we're on a warming trend. Finally, it's going to warm up quite a bit all the way through the week. We've got a high in the low 80s Thursday. Very, very excited about that. Uh, so the weather looks best tomorrow, Monday, but Tuesday is okay and Friday is okay as well. So if you want to get out in the water, tomorrow's best. Tuesday might have a little better bite, but it's going to be a little windy. Friday looks pretty nice as far as wind and waves are concerned, too. As At least that's where it stands now. A lot of that can change, but that's what we're looking at now. Here's why. Today we've got that high pressure settling in behind that big front. Tomorrow that high pressure starts to subside a little bit. Tuesday, we've got that pressure gradient kind of building up, but hasn't really settled in yet. So Tuesday, we're going to get that wind pattern going, higher wind pattern going, but doesn't really have anything settled in on our area. So going to be a decent day Tuesday, just a little windy. And uh, they're calling about two to three foot seas near shore, inshore on that Egmont Key forecast. Here's Wednesday. You can see that pressure gradient starts to build. That's why that uh, that that uh, windier condition sets in Wednesday. You've got that occluded front, high pressure right behind it, pushing on it. And that pressure gradient between that low pressure and that high pressure is what's going to create that wind flow over that midweek period. 
Thursday, that subsides a little bit, breaks up. Friday is going to be the calm before the storm. We get a little weather window before yet another cold front here. Saturday, you can see bottom left side of your screen, big cold front coming through Saturday. At least that's what it's looking like now. So weaker high pressure in the area, first half of the week, giving way to a pressure gradient midweek with a little break before a big front Saturday. So that's what we're looking at as it comes through this coming week. Best days to get on the water again, Monday, Tuesday, Friday. If it was me trying to plan a trip, I would try to go Monday. If you're going deeper, Tuesday, near shore, and then Friday should be a good near shore bite as well. Uh, and that's what we're looking at as far as the weather goes. Now, one thing I wanted to show you or talk to you guys about real quick before we get into your questions. Remember, if you have a question, you have to text us at that phone number right down here, 727-393-1947. Got to text us at that phone number if you have a question you want to answer live. But I did want to go over with you guys a little bit about upcoming events. Mike Dixon from Angle Coolers. What's up, buddy? Thanks for those stars, dude. Um, upcoming events, we've got February 15th. We've got our Real Animals in-person event at Bartow Ford. I'll be out there with Captain Mike. And uh, Captain Mike's going to be talking to the Watts Brothers. They, they are a world-renowned, the best tournament redfish team ever the watts brothers now they're big into freshwater fishing too super fishy guys they actually had a part or hand in i don't know if they like co-founded or just got in on the ground floor with power pole so super super cool guys there also we uh are going to be at that event we're going to have free cuban food from silver ring cafe and uh, we're going to be giving away two bull bay rods, a freshwater and a saltwater bull bay rod, and uh, talking fishing. So come out to that event. That's at Bartow Ford, 2800 Highway 98 North in Bartow. February 19th is our Hook a Hero event. We're going to be giving away a lot of free trips at that event. That's at Tampa Bay Sporting Clays. February 20th, in-person event at Bass Pro Shops. 2 p.m. Definitely going to be a great time. 2 p.m. in person Bass Pro Shop Seminar, February 20th. That's a Sunday. Normally we do our Bass Pro Shops events on Saturdays. This is a special February 20th Bass Pro Shops event. So don't forget that one. Also, March 12th, March 12th, we're going to be at Tampa Bay Sport and Clays shooting clay pigeons. For the Norm Schwartzkopf Memorial Shoot, uh, we are going to be doing our radio show live from Tampa Bay Sporting Clays that morning, then spe spending the rest of the day shooting shotguns at Clay Pigeons. Super pumped about that. May or may not try to fly my drone around on the clay shooting course, which will be a lot of fun, but not when anybody has a rifle or a shotgun in their hand unless it's professional. I don't want anybody to shoot my drone, but it would be pretty fun. Ryan Badola, appreciate those thousand stars. Thank you so much, dude. Also, last event, March 24th, we've got our Tampa CCA Banquet. Going to be a great time. If you're interested in events, we have a brand new events page built out. CaptainDylanHubbard.com. So, C-A-P-T Hubbard, or no wait, C-A-P-T DylanHubbard.com. Uh, and then right at the top of that new website is upcoming events. Josh has it pulled up here, so I should just show you instead of talking about it. If you go to CAPTDylanHubbard.com, brings you to the new website. We've got a blog where we post our fishing reports and some of our uh, golf council and fishery management news under our blog. And then we have upcoming events. And the upcoming events page is loaded. Coolest events that we've got there are obviously our live shows and cool stuff like that. But we've also got our uh, truck nights on here, all the cool events. We've got uh, the TTP truck night every Tuesday night. There's a lot more cool events. We're still kind of working through some finer details of our events page. So there's some stuff that's kind of repeated and uh, some, some uh, minor things we're working through. 
but a bulk of our events are on there. So definitely check it out. If you're interested in getting to uh, getting out there and doing something fun while you're in town, or if you're local, especially you're looking for cool things to do, definitely check out that uh, upcoming events page on our website. Uh, then also wanted to show you about our new where to pages. So a lot of times people come and they're like, Hey, what about where do I stay? What hotels do you guys recommend? What restaurants do you recommend? Hey, I want to go to a bar. What, what's your favorite bar? We've got a page for that now, a whole website built around that now. So it's pretty cool. David Pruitt, appreciate those stars, buddy. If you go to hubbardsmarina.com, our main website, right at the top, there's the where to. We've got where to eat, where to party, where to play, and where to stay. Right now, our way to where to play page is kind of small. We're working on building this out still, but we've got the information about my favorite place to play, and that's Tampa Bay Sporting Clays. Really, really cool place. It's like golf with a gun, so you just really can't beat it. Where to Eat, it's got all our favorite local restaurants built out, and this was all information from our captains, crew, staff. These are all our favorite kind of locals haunts. These are not like touristy places really. Well, I guess some of them have become a little touristy, but these are local haunts. Definitely check them out. We've got Where to, oh, clicked the wrong one, Where to Party. (laughs) These are captain, crew, and some of my favorite local bars. So definitely check out that one and then where to stay, which is broken down by North, Middle and South Pinellas County. And uh, we've got our kind of our partners a little bit more featured with a photo. And then we've got a bunch of the hotels with their logos, all clickable, super easy to find a hotel to stay when you're coming to visit the area. So definitely check out our new calendar pages, our new where to pages And we've got new stuff coming out soon, too. Definitely been working overtime on the website. Thanks to uh, Josh and Jared making that all possible. Jessica Hinkle, appreciate those 100 stars. Thank you so much. With that, let's get into some questions. Hopefully, you guys want to talk a little bit about fishing. Hopefully, you have some fishing questions for us. Don't forget, if you do have a fishing question for us, you have to text us at that phone number right below my drink there. Text us your fishing question if you want to answer live during the show. We've got another website launching soon uh, that's going to have all our information about Hubbard's Media. So super cool. Hubbard's Media has our first video production shoot, full production. It's pretty cool. Coming up this Wednesday, we're going to spend all day taking drones and GoPros and cameras and video cameras and uh, putting together a big old video shoot. So we're excited about that. Tomorrow, got this little bad boy is going to work on a slow pitch jigging trip, our first slow pitch jigging trip, uh, and uh, we're excited. So this is a public trip. It's like a 12-hour extreme except for only ex- uh, experienced, advanced anglers who are familiar with slow-pitch jig fishing, who have their own tackle, their own jigs. We're getting on the Flying Hub too. We're going out there to the 12-hour extreme area, and we're fishing deep for big red grouper right before that deep water grouper closure starts. And uh, we're excited, trying to target some of those scamp and red grouper and mangrove snapper, so looking forward to it. And uh, this is my new baby our Levitate Nabla, that is a Temple Reef Levitate Nabla, and this is a new, brand new, Daiwa Saltiga 35 Jigging Reel. Super excited about it. Gator Gems has some of them coming in. We've got a bunch of them coming in. Crazy, crazy awesome reels, and we've got a full line of those Temple Reef rods from the intro to the high-end Levitate Nablas, and uh, we're excited. So getting more and more into that slow-pitch jigging game, and we're going to have more of those slow-pitch jigging specific trips coming soon. Uh, Dondra Robinson said, are the jigging trips going to be posted on the website? Yes, this one was. It was listed on our 12-hour extreme trip because it was like a 12 hour extreme trip we've been talking about it during our live shows during our morning videos uh, and that's basically how we're going to kind of start it do a 12 hour extreme style 
jigging only trip. Once a month, we're going to throw in some of those 39 hour trips with a limited load doing uh, jig fishing, slow pitch jig fishing only too. And uh, we're working on putting together lady angler only trips as well. We need to get one of those scheduled for February. So we're going to have every month, we're gonna, our goal is to have a only jig fishing trip and an only lady anglers trip on top of our normal schedule. So trying to add some different product lines, some different things for people to take part in. And our lady anglers club has been growing more and more and more. And there's a lot of lady anglers who want to go fishing but might not feel as comfortable going with a boat full of guys. So we're going to make it easy and fun for lady anglers to get out there and uh, enjoy their time on the water in a judgment-free zone because no dudes are going to be on the boat. It's just going to be all lady anglers having a good time. So we're looking forward to that too. And the slow pitch jigging trips are going to be, again, for advanced anglers who are familiar with slow pitch jigging. And we're going to make a bunch of videos to help you become advanced, uh, experienced slow pitch jig fishermen. And we've got all the tackle, the rods, the reels, the jigs in our shop. And we're going to be making a bunch of videos uh, through tomorrow's trip and through upcoming trips. We're going to be bringing them on our live show, putting them on our YouTube channel, and hopefully helping you learn more about it so you can join us on these jigging-only trips. So it's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to learn with me because uh, tomorrow's my first time that I am not going to bring a rod to fish bait. It's very scary to me. <laughs> I've jig fish a lot. I liked jigging a lot when I was uh, growing up and uh, doing a lot of amberjack and, and scamp grouper hunting with diamond jigs. This is my first foray into slow pitch jigging trip. So it's going to be fun. Stacy Ammerman, thank you so much for those stars. How long should the top shot be for the half day boat? Uh, so if you're fishing a half day and you want braided line, uh, I, or you have braided line in your reel. Uh, normally the general rule of thumb is about a third of your line in the water should be, uh, monofilament or floral carbon. And, uh, generally on a half day trip fishing 40 foot of water, one third of your line in the water would be about 10, 12, 15 feet. That's plenty of top shot. Typically I have about eight to 12 feet of floral carbon on top of the braid when I'm fishing a half day, maybe 10, 15 feet if uh, I'm starting out just to make sure I don't have to cut it and retie it during the trip. Are you going to have any deep drop trips this year? No, we're not putting that 63-hour deep drop trip back into our schedule at this time. The problem with that is we are blessed to be busy, and it's a great problem to have. And the problem with those deep drop trips is they take so much time to run out there, run back, and they have to have perfect weather. So we have to cancel in advance a bunch of trips to fit that into our schedule. And then we get there, if it's three and a half, four foot, we got to cancel. And we could have ran two half day trips, an all day trip, and a 39 hour trip in that time that we had that 39 hour schedule. Plus a 63 hours only accommodates 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 people. And we could have taken 150 people and had them happy, enjoying their experience, and we wouldn't have had to cancel on them. So the the 63-hour trips are likely not going back into our schedule until we have uh, a new boat added to the fleet. Once we have a new boat added to the fleet, then we'll have more flexibility with our schedule. So stay tuned, 2023. I have a 19-quart live bait cooler. If I purchase live bait uh, prior to a trip, can I put them in my own live bait cooler? Yes, you can bring a live bait cooler, but those are really just for live shrimp. The Ingle cooler is super popular, the Ingle uh, live bait cooler. A lot of people use them for shrimp. They work really well. And a little birdie told me they have some cool stuff coming out for their Ingle live bait coolers, but... Wasn't allowed to tell anybody yet, but stay tuned for that. Uh, but they're really just for uh, live shrimp. Uh, you can't really keep a bunch of live pinfish alive in one of those uh, uh, live bait coolers. Live pinfish take a lot of oxygen. So even a dozen live pinfish in one of those bigger live bait coolers, you need like two or three bubblers to keep them going, especially if the water gets hot. So... 
want to make sure you put live shrimp only in those live bait coolers. Also, guys, remember, your comments, I can only see like 10 of them. So if you have a question that you want to answer during the show, you got to text us at that phone number right down here, right below my drink. So if you have a question, text us at that phone number. Then we can answer your questions live during the show. Let's give away our first free trip of the night. We're going to give away a 10-hour all-day trip. 10-hour all-day trip free for two guests. That is a 236, I don't know. It's $119 times two. <laughs> Let's see who won a free 10-hour all-day trip for two guests. Winner is 238. That's the word I was looking for. Lewis Lambert from Sarasota. Congratulations, Lewis Lambert. Make sure if you're picked as a lucky winner, you got to text us at that phone number right below my drink. Your full home address within five minutes. That is how you claim your free trip. All right. Now, let's get into some more of these questions and uh, answer you guys' burning questions about some trips coming up. Uh, how do I get, how do I claim my giveaway trip online so I can book it? Uh, so if you are picked as one of the lucky winners, as I mentioned, you got to claim it by texting us your full home address within five minutes to prove you're watching live. Then we take that and the next day after the show, we submit it. And by about the end of that following week, we make up a certificate. We slap it in the mail for you and mail it to your home. Then once you have the certificate, you can call us and book over the phone with a credit card. And once you book over the phone with a credit card, just bring that certificate in with you and uh, use it as payment for your trip like cash. Lindsey Johnson, appreciate those stars. Thank you so much. So if you are the lucky winner, you got to claim it by texting us your full home address within five minutes. Then you got to wait for it to come in the mail, make your reservation over the phone, hold it with a credit card, don't pay for it. Day of the trip, bring in the free trip certificate. We can honor it. It's like cash, basically. Got to have it with you to redeem it, like cash. How many fillet knives? What is that? How many fillet knives does a crew go through in a year? Well, it depends on the crew member. Uh, Will McClure goes through about two hundred because <laughs> he will buy a new one every trip uh, because it's easier than trying to keep it sharpened. So he says it does cut a lot better when it's fresh and uh, it's a lot easier when your knife's sharp. Some crew members buy them regularly. Uh, other crew members uh, will just keep them sharp. I personally don't buy knives hardly ever because I just use a sharpener and keep it sharp. Uh, and I don't fillet fish quite as much as I used to. Uh, but like guys like Captain Frank never buys knives. He just keeps his sharp. Dusty never buys knives. He just keeps his sharp. Smokey buys knives a lot because he loses his. Will buys knives a lot because he's cutting bigger fish like those red snapper, those big grouper, and a newer blade works a lot better. It makes your life a lot easier. So it, five of them a month, mostly because he loses them. See? It depends on the crew member. Some, some lose them. Some just need them because they're cutting bigger fish more often. I don't know. Steve Batchelor, appreciate those stars, buddy. Thank you so much. So to answer your question about fillet knives, it really depends on the knife and your use. But the Dexter Russell knives are what all of us use. Bubble blades are stupid. Danco knives, I don't personally like. I don't know how people cut with those knives. A Dexter Russell, Sani Safe, white handled is my favorite. Wood handled is great too. Uh, we like the high carbon ones that rust because they have a little bit more flex to them, a little easier to manipulate the blade. And they sharpen up easily, but they do lose an edge a little harder. They do make some harder steel versions, harder to sharpen, but they hold an edge better. And that's why Will will buy new ones more regularly because he uses the stiffer Dexter Russell knife, which is lower carbon, so it doesn't rust, but it's harder to get that edge back to it once it once the edge goes away. So it kind of depends on your use and what you're targeting to fillet. Uh, Brian Eakins, appreciate those stars. And uh, Stephen Batchelor again, thank you, man. All right, next question. Can you per purchase tickets to fish in June or July right now? 
Yes, please do. So our busiest months of the year are always March, April, June, and July. Busiest months of the year, hands down, June and July. Everybody and their brother comes out of the woodwork when that little fish called Red Snapper opens up. I don't get it personally. It's hot as heck in June and July. It's busy as heck in June and July. Personally, I don't like uh, fishing in those months. Uh, the the transitional times, spring and fall, like uh, April, May, uh, October, November are my favorite times of the year. It's cooler, not crazy. We don't have bad cold fronts. We don't have those just summertime doldrums going on. Wintertime is even great in between the cold fronts. Right now, super light loads and really good fishing when the weather's nice in between the fronts. Like June, July, August, September... It's hot. It's people everywhere, and uh, it's it's definitely a little tougher. Not not my favorite time to get out there on the water, but there's not a bad time to go fishing. But definitely, in my opinion, red snapper is super overrated, and um, it's too hot, too hot, and too many people. <laughs> but if you're looking to book a red snapper trip, do it now because the schedule for 2022 opened up. Uh, I think it was November 30th, and like a majority of those trips are already 70, 80, 90% full. A lot of the extreme trips are already sold out. So book your red snapper trips now if you care about them. If you're one of those people that only fish during red snapper season, you're missing out if you haven't booked it already. Daniel Ward said, how do you win a free fishing trip? You have to comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream. So go to Facebook.com, find Hubbard's Marina's main page, give our page a like, find our live video, give the live video a like, comment one time. All you have to do is like our page, like the video, comment one time. That enters you for a chance to win a free trip. So make sure you get chance, you get entered to win. Don't miss out. Is the gag's minimum size limit going to increase? Um, so management changes on gags are super far in the future. Right now, what happened was, uh, they did two stock assessments, CDAR 70, CDAR 72. Um, so CDAR is short. That's an acronym for Southeast Data. I forget what it stands for, but. <laughs> But basically, it's the shortened term for the name for a stock assessment. So CDAR 72 was the gag grouper assessment. And what happened was they went out there, they did this stock assessment, they took all these data inputs and modeling and uh, thought about it for a long time, completed the stock assessment, and basically it says that there's not, as not, there's not enough male gags in the Gulf of Mexico compared to female gags. The, the ratio is very low. So gags are one of those species that actually change sex at their, in their course of their natural life. So a uh, majority of those gags are female. And then if there's not a male in the area, it's thought that one more dominant female will turn to male and then become the dominant uh, male predator in that area and then become responsible for fertilization of the eggs in that area. And uh, basically, the ratio from male to female is supposed to be somewhere between like 20 and 30%. And recent uh, research projects and studies have found it to be like 2 to 7%. So the ratio from male to female is extremely low in gag grouper. So that's a big concern and there's not as many gags out there is what they're saying. And I definitely would agree on the fact that we've kind of seen an overall down downtrend in gag grouper, especially from the recent red tides. Our near shore gag bite didn't get crazy. It was a pretty good inshore Tampa Bay gag bite. It was a really good offshore deep water gag bite. But that near shore area didn't really get crazy, especially like it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So we've definitely seen a little downtrend, so that's what they're looking at now. However, when these assessments come out and they have bad news, the first step is going through a plan amendment to adjust catch levels. So they're going to adjust the catch level, lower the quota down. Once the quota is lowered down, 
then access shrinks, then the other tools come out of the toolbox. So if we have a super low quota and all of a sudden we start our season June 1st, go out there, catch some gags, and the season closes really fast, then the toolbox opens and the managers can use other tools in the toolbox like adjusting the season, adjusting the size limit, adjusting the bag limit. And those things are tools that they can use to alter the season and provide more access. So if you lower the bag limit, the idea is you get more season days open to catch the fish. If you increase the minimum size limit, sometimes that will help, but sometimes it'll hurt. It also depends on the age that or that size that that fish reaches sexual maturity because the idea with minimum size limits is you want at least 50 to 75% of the population to be sexually reproductive and at least spawn one time prior to be removed from the fishery meaning if they know a gag grouper at 20 inches is sexually mature or at least 50 percent of them are sexually mature and they have enough time between 20 and 24 inches to spawn at least one time then that means 24 inches is a good minimum size limit but if they don't get sexually mature like only 60 percent of them are sexually mature and they don't have time to spawn then increasing the minimum size limit could potentially help the fishery and help the 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 biomass or number of gags in the Gulf. So that's going to be a big project and a lot of research and a lot of money and time spent trying to figure all that information out. And FWC is leading the charge because Florida is responsible for like 90% of the gag grouper landings in the Gulf of Mexico. Ryan Badola, Calvin Brisker, Stacy Ammerman, appreciate those stars. And also Tony Jackson on YouTube. We got some YouTube uh, supporters out there too. Appreciate it, Tony Jackson. Thank you, buddy. All right, back to the questions. Let's see what other questions we have here. Uh, have you used a lizard fish for bait? So a bait, uh, lizard fish is a great bait. Lizard fish work really well for bait, especially I like them for big red grouper, a live lizard fish, like 10, 12, 16 inch lizard fish is a killer red grouper bait. Uh, one of the biggest near shore red grouper I ever saw caught uh, was on a live lizard fish. So definitely works really, really well, especially near shore where they're commonly caught. So what you got to think about is think like a fish. What's a natural bait? You take a bait that you only see in 40 foot of water and you take it 200 miles or you take it into 200 feet of water. It's not a natural bait, so it doesn't work as well. That's why lizard fish work so well near shore, because we catch them near shore. You send it back down to where it's naturally seen. It's definitely a better bait. Uh, let's see. What other questions do we have here? Uh, how often are slot limits used with y'all? Uh, so if you're talking about y'all, meaning Hubbard's Marina, very, very... <laughs> Very, very rare, if at all, are slot limits used for offshore species. And the reason why is barotrauma. So when you bring a fish up from the bottom, it has gas in it. So if you're, easiest way to explain this, if you're a scuba diver, you know what this phenomenon is. If you're not a scuba diver, if you don't scuba dive, you don't know. But if you swam to the bottom of your pool, if you have one of those deep pools that's 15 feet deep and you were somehow able to fill a plastic shopping bag or like a plastic Ziploc bag full with air at the bottom of your pool. So 15 feet down on the bottom of your pool, you, you somehow get a air hose down there, fill up a Ziploc bag full of air, you zip it shut, then let that bag float to the surface before it got to the surface, it would expand so much, it would likely explode before it ever made it to the surface of the pool. Now, exponentially increase that when you take that bag down to 100 foot of water and fill it up. It's going to explode way before it ever makes it to the surface because gases expand as pressure decreases. Every 33 feet of water is an extra atmospheric pressure. We have 14.1 pounds of pressure on us here at sea level. You go down 33 feet, it's 14.1 times 2. Go down to 66 feet, 14.1 times 3, so on and so forth. So 
when you're at the bottom in 100 foot of water, the gases inside that fish's swim bladder and belly cavity are all compressed under four atmospheric pressures. All of a sudden, it gets caught on a hook and line and dragged to the surface really quickly because you're trying to get them into the boat. All of a sudden, all that gas inside the fish expands really, really fast. Its swim bladder, stomach is pushed out of its mouth. A lot of time, they'll regurgitate their food. Their eyes will bulge. They'll have nitrogen bubbles escaping from under their scales. The scales get all pushed out. Sometimes even crazy things happen at the back of the fish, too. And all that's called barotrauma. And it's basically damage caused to the fish by being retrieved from the bottom to the surface. And the only way to mitigate that is using a descending device or a venting tool and making sure that fish can return to bottom. But there's discard mortality rates, and those discard mortality rates are super high because of that barotrauma issue. So that is why they don't use slot limits for offshore species, because if they were trying to protect those big, healthy breeding fish, which is important if they were trying to, which we want to, but unfortunately, you would be causing more dead fish. And it's better to throw that uh, fish that's going to die anyway in your cooler if it's legal. So that's why they don't use slot limits offshore. Also keep in mind, a bigger fish, like you catch a 20-pound red snapper, and then you catch a 6-pound red snapper, that 20-pound red snapper is called, the, the terminology is more fecund. And fecundity means that it ha has the potential and ability to produce more eggs. So a 6-pound red snapper might be able to shoot out there 2,000, 4,000 eggs. A 20-pound red snapper could produce 100,000 eggs. So those big, big breeder fish are super important to the population. So when you catch one of those out of season, uh, if you're over your bag limit, it's super important to make sure you're using a venting tool or descending device and get it back in the water quickly. Don't take an Instagram photo shoot with it for five minutes. Get it back there in the water quickly. Get it going back down to bottom. It's going to help us out a lot. It's even exponentially more important when it's a big trophy-sized fish. And those are the ones everybody wants to take 100 photos with at the surface. If it's going back in the water, get it back in the water quickly. Use a descending device or a venting tool. All right, off the soapbox. Uh, what other questions do we have? Is a Shimano Takoda 700 good for a 39-hour trip? I literally have no idea what that is. <laughs> I would have to Google it. Is that a spinning reel? What's a Takoda? That's a new one for me. Josh is Googling it for me. Oh, that's a line counter. Huh. Uh, it looks like a decent reel. It kind of depends on the amount of drag. Uh, for the, the all our trips on our website, we have um, tackle recommendations. So you can go to our 39-hour page, and it will actually tell you the different tackle recommendations and sizes. Basically, for a 39-hour trip, you'd want if you're an advanced angler, you have your own tackle, you'd want three rods, one with like 20, 30 pounds of drag, 40 pound line, 40, 50 pound line for mangroves, one with like 30, 40 pounds of drag, 60 to 80 pound line for your red snapper, red grouper, and average uh, gags, and then one with like 40, 50 pound drag, 80 to 100 pound line for your big gags, your big amberjack. Those are kind of your three main options, so... That really, to answer your question, it'd be more about the gear ratio and the drag power of that reel. If it's only got 25, 30, 35 pounds of drag, then you'd probably want to put like 40, 50 pound test on it, use it for a mangrove snapper reel if it's got a high gear ratio, and then rent one of our rods to put 80 pound leaders on it, use those for big fish. Deep water grouper, a lot of, a lot of people talking about the deep water uh, closure um, the deep water closure occurs in February and March, and it's only for grouper, and it only means you can't keep, you can't keep grouper when you're past that closure line. So the closure line is at 20 fathoms. A fathom is six feet, so 20 fathoms is 120 feet. So when you're fishing beyond 120 feet in February and March, you can't keep grouper. 
So on our 12 hour or on our 39 hour trips, 44 hour trips, what we'll do is we'll fish deeper a lot of times to start, target those mangrove snapper, those vermilion snapper, all those porgies and almacos at night. And then during the day when we're targeting those red grouper and seeing them more often, we'll come inside that closure area and be fishing 110, 120, even 130 foot of water. There's some deeper areas inside the fence that we can fish legally and keep red grouper and scamp grouper. So the deep water closure does not affect our ability to catch and keep grouper. You can still keep grouper in February and March. You've just got to be inside that closure line. So we'll play that game. 12 hour night snappers, they're going on now. We ran a 12 hour night snapper a week and a half, two weeks ago. The uh, 12 hour night snappers are every month around the full moon. And then once we get into like March, March through October, they're basically three times a month skipping the week closest to the full moon or closest to the new moon, excuse me. So they're every week, every month closest to the, the Friday night, closest to the full moon. And then March through October, they're three times a month closest to the moon phases except for the new moon. Let's give away another free trip. We've got a five-hour half day for two guests to give away. That is a $150 value for two people. Let's see who the lucky winner is. Bob Cole from Leesburg. Congratulations, buddy. Congratulations. Remember, if you're picked as that lucky winner, you have to claim that free trip by uh, texting us at this phone number right below my drink within five minutes to prove you're watching live. To be entered to win, you have to like the video and comment one time. So like the video, comment one time, that enters you for a chance to win. If you're picked as a lucky winner, you got to claim it by texting that phone number within five minutes to prove you're watching live, then we'll mail you a certificate. That's how it works. Let's see if we have a few more questions we can get through here before the end of the show. Why is Red Snapper only in June and July? Uh, because it's a very small quota, and we only have a very short season because the quota gets filled very quickly. So on average, it's about 62 to 70-ish days. I would expect closer to 70 days. It will always open June 1st, and it will close most likely around the first week of August. We won't know the exact dates for red snapper for our federal four hire fishery until around mid-May, early May, after that April council meeting. But if you wait until then, all the trips will be sold out. So book them June and July, and uh, that will be your best bet. Remember, if you have a question have to text it to this phone number to get it answered live. We only see a few of your questions on the Facebook stream, on the YouTube stream, on the Instagram stream. So you got to text us at that phone number in order to get your question answered live. Larry Christie, appreciate those stars. Thank you so much. What does tuna bite on on the 39-hour trip? Tuna, blackfin tuna that we catch quite a bit. We catch them trolling. Those um, Rapala x rap Magnums, uh, also the Nomad DTX Minnows. Uh, we'll see them on the Cedar Plugs, on the Dredges, all right there on our online store or in our shop, too. You can see those trolling lures that we recommend for tuna. Uh, we also catch them flatlining on 39-hour trips occasionally as well. And uh, you can even catch them on those jigs, those slow-pitch jigs vertical jigs, but most commonly we catch them trolling or flatlining uh, while out there in deeper water. The new moon around January and February is historically, new and full moon, is historically when we catch the most blackfin tuna on our 39-hour trips at night, but we'll see. All right. Let's see what other questions we have here. Tyler said, have you ever tried using live pilchards or goggle eyes on our trips? So that is a very popular bait in southeast Florida around the Keys, Miami, Naples area, uh, even into Naples. So southeast and southwest coast. 
not popular in our area. The pilchard, goggle eyes, not really a common bait. We use primarily sardines and thread fins, which are more local and uh, um, more commonly seen. Cigar minnows, that's a really good one. We <clears throat> You get a live cigar minnow on a... Uh, on a sabiki rig, or you're lucky enough to, to cast net them on the way out or whatever, they are incredible baits on the bottom. Live sardines, live cigar minnows, incredible bait on the bottom. But it's almost impossible to catch them lively. And then if you do catch them, keeping them alive is a nightmare. Almost impossible. <laughs> so you literally have to, like, catch them on a sabiki rig, reel them up, and then drop them down on your bottom rig, which... Just takes too much time, and I don't recommend bringing a sabiki rig out there on a trip because you're going to be spending time fishing for bait when you should be using bait to fish for bigger fish. So uh, dead bait works well. We provide thread fins uh, or sardines if we can't get the thread fins or vice versa, and uh, they work well. The dead bait works well. Also, squid is a great option. We provide that, or you can bring live shrimp or live pin fish, which we sell at the shop, or you can bring your own. And we have a variety of frozen dead bait in our shop that you can bring with you, like Bonita, Cigar Minnows. You're welcome to bring Goggle Eyes and uh, uh, the other one the other one that you said, but I just wouldn't recommend it. It's impossible to keep alive. Pilchards. All right, let's see. What other questions do we have? What is the address to Bartow Ford, and when is the seminar? That's February 15th is that in-person event uh, at uh, Bartow Ford, and uh, it's from 7 to 9 p.m., and uh, Bartow Ford is 2800 Highway 98 North. You could Google Bartow Ford, find the directions, or go to our upcoming events on our website. Again, C-A-P-T, uh, Dylan Hubbard. Dot com and then click upcoming events to find all that information. Uh, let's see, what other questions do we have here, Josh? Uh, so anybody asking about the supporters page, we do have the supporters group open, but the supporters page is 100% controlled by, ran by Facebook. It's an automatic Facebook thing. We don't control membership in the supporters group when you become a supporter you get automatic access when you're not a supporter it kicks you out and it's not something we have access to add people to or subtract people to i pay a supporters membership so i can access it and post as dylan hubbard uh, so no one has any control over adding you back to or removing you from the supporters group we can remove people if they're a problem but we've only done that like once um so most of the time, if you're having problems with the supporters group, it's because your credit card number changed or, or you had to get a new card or your card expired or something like that. That's most commonly what happens. But we're happy to help you if you're having issues, but we can't add you back, unfortunately. We have no control over that. Uh, the supporters group is really cool. We do a supporters after show, after every live show. We post a lot of information there during the week, and you get a little bit more one-on-one -on -one communication it's a lot of fun. If you haven't tried it, haven't looked at it, maybe think about it. It's a lot of fun. Let's see. Is the rod and reel and tackle included on 10-hour trips? So on all of our trips, you're welcome to bring your own rods and reels and your own tackle, or we have the option to rent a rod and reel, which provides you with all the tackle for that rented rod and reel for the duration of the trip. A 10-hour trip, that's only $15. We give you a rod, reel, and all your tackle which let me tell you, you go out and buy your own rod and reel, even if you get a free rod and reel, if you go out and buy enough lead, hooks, swivels, weights, and leader to do a 10-hour trip, you're going to be spending more than $15, guaranteed. So it's a great deal in my mind and uh, a great option. But, yes, it is a rental uh, extra option, or you can provide your own. We have a private 12-hour extreme trip on the 13th what fish are going to be in season, and what to bring on that trip. So that, I assume, is February 15th, 13th, I would assume, since there was no month mentioned. 
Um, but uh, in February, everything's open that is now. So you're going to be targeting red grouper, scamp grouper, mangrove snapper, yellowtail snapper, corgis, vermilions, almacos, and uh, the deep water grouper closure will be going on. So we'll be fishing around 120 foot, trying to target those red grouper, scamp grouper, and mangroves. And uh, pinfish is an extra option on all of our trips. You can always buy pinfish or bring them yourself. Uh, when you're out there on the extreme trip. Is there a prime month for fishing? Any month, every month is a prime month for fishing. It really depends on what you want to catch and what you want to target. Like, for example, if you're one of those people that really wants one of those red snapper, they're only open two months a year, so those two months are the prime months to catch them. Uh, whereas if you're really wanting a gag grouper, November, December is when they bite the best, but we catch a lot of big ones in June and July when we're out there fishing in super deep water in June and July because it's so dang hot we have to fish deeper. Longer rides, more people on the boat, and uh, we do get some bigger gags out there in deeper water, just not as many. November and December we get more gags, but a lot of times they're a little smaller and we're fishing a little shallower. Is red tide an annual thing? Like, do you have to worry about it every year? Uh, it depends. Red tide is a naturally occurring organism. It's naturally occurring. However, if we have the right salinity, the right water temperatures, the algae is present, and then you introduce a bunch of food to it, like nitrogen-rich or phosphate-rich pollutants, all of a sudden you have a recipe for a red tide bloom. When it blooms... If the recipe is right around the area, we can have these extremely co dense concentrations and blooms of red tide that really cause a lot of problems. However, you'll have red tide blooms, and then something comes through and changes the salinity, rapidly changes the water temperature, or removes the food. Then all of a sudden, the bloom goes away, and it's not a big deal. But if you have a situation like Piney Point, dumping a bunch of uh, pollutants in the bay... Then you have the algae is present, the red tide is already present on the south side of Tampa Bay. Then you have a big old tropical storm come up the coastline, pushes all that naturally occurring organism that's already sitting there on the south side of Tampa Bay into the bay with all that piney point water and mixes it all together, gets the salinity levels right, water temperatures right, and you have an explosion of terrible situation like we saw this past year. Or not this past year year before that so it really depends on what is going on in our environment is there a pollutant is the water temperature right is the algae present if all those variables go along sometimes it can happen every year hoping and praying it doesn't <laughs> working hard at the florida guides association with other groups and a lot of people putting a lot of effort into it so Stay tuned, we'll have more information coming up about that for sure. If you were to rent a rod and reel and bring one of your own, would you still get the weights, leaders, and hooks uh, for your rental? So if you have a rod and reel that matches up similar to our rental rod and reel, and you pay for a rod and reel rental, and you don't want to use our rod and reel, you just want to use yours, as long as it's similar to our rod and reel rental, yes, we can give you the hooks, swivels, leads, leaders, for you to use on your own personal rod instead of putting it on one of our rental rods. But it has to be a similar reel to our rod and reel rental or it won't match up. So keep that in mind. Uh, Justin Prince, appreciate those stars. Mary Atkins as well. And Andy Wilson. Thank you so much, guys, for those stars. And you're right, Mary. You do get uh, a... Uh, free t-shirt as a supporter as well and we also gave away a free 12-hour trip to a bunch of supporters where we had a lot of fun this past uh i think that was in i forget when it was <laughs> but it was a lot of fun it was so much fun i forgot when it was uh what type of fishing is available early february uh with your private charters we do Private charters all year round, a variety of lengths. We can do uh, a 5-hour, 6-hour, 8-hour, 10-hour, 12-hour, 39-hour, 44-hour. Private charters are totally customizable and unique. We can do whatever you want, target whatever you want. It's up to you. 
Could you please explain HMS permits and how they rate relate to recreational fishermen? So uh, HMS permit is a very intricate uh, permit, and it's only required for certain species. So I believe you're getting an HMS and a CMP permit confused, and your question isn't specific enough for me to give you a lot of information. But there's a refish permit. Uh, a, a head boat charter head boat refish permit, which is our federal permits, which costs about thirty grand for six passengers. I just bought one for ninety grand, and it covers about eighty passengers. So they're typically very expensive. Thirty thousand dollars is a going rate for a charter head boat refish permit to run federal fishing charters in the federal waters of the Gulf of Mexico. There's only twelve hundred and eighty nine permits in the entire Gulf of Mexico. And they're under a moratorium. If they're not renewed, transferred, or sold after a year of their expiration date, they terminate, disappear forever. There's only 1,289 of them left currently. So they're about 30 grand for a six pack permit. Above that, it's typically about one to 2,000 per person. So, no, 30 grand for a charter headboat permit for six people, a headboat permit for 60, 70, 80 people. 90, 100, 120 grand. Like I said, I just bought one for 90 grand for 80 people. And that was because I'm good friends with the guy who sold it to me. <laughs> Probably was 120 grand uh, on the street. So they are extremely expensive. CMP or Coastal Migratory Pelagic Permit is, I believe, still an open permit. It might be under moratorium, but there's a lot of them. They're super cheap, typically around four to five to six thousand dollars, depending on who you buy them from. Then you have highly migratory species or HMS permits. Those are like a stamp. And I believe, again, those are open permits, super easy to get. Uh, but you do have to have them if you want to target and harvest billfish, swordfish, sailfish, those species. You have to have HMS permits. And it requires an immediate, within 24 hours, reporting of any swordfish or sailfish interactions or harvests. So a lot of recreational fishermen mess that up. Private rec guys going out there in their private boats, you have to have an HMS permit if you're targeting swordfish or sailfish, and you have to report the catch within 24 hours to NOAA HMS. So that's, I think, your question, but I'm not sure. If you have more intricate question, I can help you out more if you elaborate a little bit. Uh, we, oh, we are out of time. All right, Josh, I see you, dog. Uh, real quick, before we give away our last free trip of the night, uh, reminder, again, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, best days to get out there this week. Uh, probably Tuesday for a 10-hour trip would be your best bet. Friday looks pretty good for the half day tomorrow, too. Uh, don't forget about our Saturday morning Real Animals radio show Every Saturday morning from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Also, don't forget about our live show. We do them every Sunday night. We still got another free trip to give away. Uh, supporters after show will start around 9.50. We're going to keep that supporters after show a little short. I got to be at the marina at 4 a.m. tomorrow. We've got that slow pitch jigging trip going out. So uh, I got to get home early tonight. So we're going to keep the supporters after show short this week. But typically, it's about 30 minutes, and it will start at 9.50 p.m. on that supporters page. If you want to become a supporter, go to Hubbard's Marina on Facebook, and you will find a button right at the top of our timeline that says become a supporter. Or right on the video, a lot of times, it'll say become a supporter. So you can click that, too. Then we want to show you real quickly a video from our friends over at Salt Strong. So we've been authorized, partnered with Salt Strong to do something pretty cool. Let me show you real quick that video. Uh-oh, my full button. Is, oh, there it goes. Go ahead, Josh. Sounds not on. Are you sick and tired of all the different lures that claim to catch fish but never do? Here's the deal. We have a bait called the Slam Shady Paddle Tail. It has now caught over 40 
two different species. In fact, we are trying to break a world record with the most amount of species caught on any one single lure in one single color. If you want a free pack, click down below right now. It's first come, first serve. We will send you one out completely for free. All we ask in return is that you send us some fish pics and or videos showing what species that you caught so we can add it to the record and you can be a part of it. Click down below right now. Hey guys, you wanna make sure, check it out. You get free lures. Just check out that link Josh is putting in the chat for you. Uh, and uh, make sure you follow through. You get free stuff. All you have to do is enter your information and pay for shipping it's just a couple bucks depending on where you live but definitely check it out and use that link we are putting in the chat for you guys also with that want to make sure we give a shout out to our friends over at uh gator gyms tackle for sponsoring and putting on the show 3301 pinellas point drive in saint pete 33712. Make sure you check them out. Gator Jim's Tackle. Make sure you tell them Hubbard's Marina sent you. Want to give a shout out and thank you to our other sponsors Real Animals Radio Show, Garmin, Yamaha, Bass Pro, Ingle Coolers, Salt Strong, Aquatic Nutrition, Sport Fishing Chums, Cleanse Oil, and Bull Bay Rods. And then don't forget to check out Hubbard's Marina on TikTok, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube. And, of course, Facebook, too. Make sure to check us out, follow us, like our pages. We appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll see you again next week right here on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook and YouTube channel. Don't forget, we're going to be live next week for the show. We will not be live Super Bowl Sunday. We're taking Super Bowl Sunday off. We don't miss a lot of live shows, but Super Bowl Sunday is one of those ones that I think we all have something to do that night. So wish me luck. I'm heading out there for slow pitch jig fishing tomorrow with my Daiwa 35 jig and reel on my Levitate Nabla brand new Temple Reef Rod. Super excited. Check us out at Hubbard's Marina. We'll have these reels in our shop probably next week. We'll have a full line of jig and reels in the Saltiga and Saltis line from size 15 to size 30. We'll have that 35 jig and reel by Saltiga as well. Coming in the mail anytime now. We've got the full line of Temple Reef Rods. We've got Jig Pro, Johnny Jigs, and Daiwa SK Slow Pitch Jigs in our shop. And what we don't have, Gator Gyms does. So come out and see us. Don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. Let's see who won our free 39-hour fishing trip for one guest, that is a $449 value. Let's see who won. Vicky Costello Singleton from Lakeland, a local. Congratulations, Vicky Singleton. Make sure you claim that free trip within five minutes to prove you're watching live. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, double tap us on Instagram. Please, please, guys, we appreciate it. Y'all have a good night. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed the show. We'll see you again next week for more fishing fun. Until then, tight lines. And don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too dumb.